My name is Jennifer Yolman, and my book is An Introduction to Kant's Moral Philosophy. When I started working on the book, I knew that I wanted to answer this question about why we should be drawn to Kantian morality, what, our, what its appeals are, um, apart from the fact that it's commanded somehow. But that does not make it sound very appealing, and so I wanted to know what the what was good about it. And um, there are uh, people working on that now um, more and more, but um, a lot of the traditional secondary literature is not focused on that topic. It's focused more on the implications of the law once you accept it, or the implications of Kantian morality once you accept it. And, and I was really interested in why should we accept it? Um, why should we be drawn to it? So I ended up spending, in some ways, more time with the texts and less time with um, interlocutors, so to speak, uh, in print um, than I might have otherwise. But that was also a benefit, so that was also a, a nice thing. Um, I, you know, I like spending time with Kant. Kant's moral philosophy is brand new in that the reason to be moral is not to please God, it's not to please other people, um, so it's not for society's sake, and it's also not to make yourself happy. It may do all of those things, in fact it does do all of those things in the long run, but none of those is the reason to be moral. And the reason to be moral lies within your own recognition of the of respect for your own and other people's humanity, which is a particular set of capacities to be, in my view, creative, um, free and creative. I think one of my favorites is the very short set of three questions. Uh, what can I know? Um, what ought I do? What may I hope? I just think, given that that sums up sort of the entire program of Kant's philosophy in three questions, it's just so beautifully I don't know, succinct and provocative or, or, or suggestive of all kinds. Anyway, I just love those questions. I love that, he's, that he sets those questions. I should say, because I work on the moral philosophy, that it's his moral philosophy, but I won't say that. I actually, uh, at least to me, it's that he is a incredibly systematic philosopher. He wants to be a philosopher of everything. Um, there's no corner of knowledge or normativity or anything else you want that's, that's untouched. And yet he does all of that. He is this kind of systematic philosopher, but he does it without having the mind of God be the receptacle of all of that or the principle of the unity or that which ties it all together. Hegel, in my opinion. That's a, a controversial answer. It's going to be a controversial answer, but I just think Hegel was a marvelous reader of Kant and understood him very well. Paul Geyer was my dissertation advisor, and he's always been a huge influence, and I admire and esteem and value his work immeasurably, so I have to mention him, first of all. Barbara Herman is another person who's been a huge uh, influence and help on my work. What's good about the Kantian moral law? 